and we're with the Winkle, and today we're making string art. Kate is my niece, and she's also been one of my art students for a long time, and she loves the Winkle, don't you, Kate? Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite project from the Winkle? I like the Jumping Joey and the Valentine's Secret keychain. Yeah, those were some of my favorite too. Those were really good ones. I am so glad you love the Winkle and that you're joining me today for this string art project. Should we see what's in our kit today? Mm-hmm. A piece of cork, three stencils, string, and some pens. Great, on top of everything in your kit today, you'll just need a pair of scissors and then we're ready to get started. Let's do it. Kate, our art project today is going to involve math. Did you know a lot of art involves math? No. No? Well, we're gonna learn math today while we're doing a fun art project. Isn't that so cool? Uh, how are we gonna do it at the same time? <laughs> I'll show you. Do you see the three stencils you have here? Yes. What shapes do we have? A star, a pumpkin, and a heart. These shapes are very geometric and they're also symmetrical. So see if you cut them in half, they would be the same on one side as the other side. Do you see that about all of these shapes? Uh -huh. So you can pick any of these shapes and we're gonna make it on our cork out of strings and pins. Or if you want at home and you have your own piece of paper, you can make your own shape. And just make sure it's about the same size as one of these shapes, okay? Which shape do you wanna do? I wanna do the heart. Okay, you do the heart. What and are you gonna do? I'm gonna do the star. If any of you do the pumpkin at home, you're just gonna use the outside line. You're not gonna do all those inside lines. You can also turn the pumpkin into an apple. Or like an orange. Or an orange, that's right. And like I said before, if you wanna do your own shape like a cloud or a teardrop or a snowman, anything like that, you can do that too. First, we're gonna cut out our stencils. So try and go along the outside line the best that you can. As with any Winkle video, if we fast forward or get too far ahead of you, you can always pause the video and catch up to us when you're done. If there's any instructions that you didn't understand or is there a step that you didn't get to, you can always rewind the video, press play, and catch those instructions again. Yeah, sometimes I have to rewind the video. You do? Yeah, rewinding's totally fine, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kate is done with her heart, but I'm gonna show you just a little trick, is we wanna get all that white on the outside the best we can. So if you have a little bit of white on the outside still, just go ahead and give it a little trim so that shape is as close to a heart, or whatever shape you're using, as you can. All right, we have our shapes. Awesome, now we're ready to put them on our cork. Put it on your cork, try and center it in the middle, very good and we're going to take our pins, and this part is pretty easy. You wanna make sure, of course, not to poke your finger with the pins, and you're, not, you're also going to not poke the paper. So you wanna put the pins on the outside of your paper. And in math, that is called the perimeter. We're creating a perimeter around our shape. Now, every pin you put in, you want to kind of be equally spaced apart. So your little fingers, can probably stick between each pin. Kate, if you put down your finger and then put a pin right there, that's exactly how much space you need between each pin. If you're doing like the star or the heart, for instance, if you ever get to some sort of corner or pointy part, you're gonna wanna make sure to put a pin there for sure because that will help your shape look a lot better. And it's okay if they're not exactly spaced apart perfectly. Try and push them in as far as you can, very good. And look how my pins, and yours too, Kate, very good. I'm trying to keep them straight up and down, okay? Because if you have pins that are pointed like that, that's not going to create a very good effect for our string art. So you wanna make sure to look at your pins and make sure they're as straight up and down as possible. And see, I'm coming right here to the point of the star. I wanna make sure to put a pin right there at the point. Now see how Kate's getting a little off right here with her heart? You wanna make sure those pins are right up to the edge of your heart or your shape as much as possible. As Kate and I are putting our perimeter of pins around our shape, 
we are going to fast forward the video. So if you wanna press pause, and then when you have your perimeter of pins around your shape, you can press play. Okay, you finished. So did you. Yeah, let's show everybody. A heart and a star, good job. Okay, now take one of your extra pins and we're gonna get that shape out of there, that paper. So just take your pin and put it under that shape and just get that shape out of there. We don't need that anymore. So what we have right here is a perimeter of pins. If you go around your perimeter and you notice any pins that are too close together, like if they're touching, you could just take one of them out. All right, I'm gonna show you guys about this string, okay? This is called floss. It's not to floss your teeth with. It's just embroidery. Let me show you the floss I did in the string. Because uh, it's called floss. It's embroidery floss. Okay, so everyone will be able to find the end of their floss in your loop here. And you're not gonna take off these papers. You're gonna leave the papers on, and you're just going to slowly pull the floss out of the loop. So just a little bit at a time, not too much because you don't want it to get out of control. Now this part, if you're young like Kate, could be a little tricky, but if you know how to tie a knot, this will be really easy. I don't know how to tie a knot. No, I'll show you. Okay, so you're gonna wrap your string around one of your pins. You wrapped it around. That's simple enough, right? You're gonna make a circle like this. So you're gonna have a little X where your string crosses over a big circle. Like this? Yes, pinch the crossover part with your pinchers. And then with your other finger, with your other hand, push that tail between the circle. And then pull. Yes! Yes, you did it! <laughs> we have to do it with all the pins. No, we don't have to do this on all the pins. This is just on the first pin and the last pin. That's it. So we're going to do it again. I know. It's going to be fine. We're crisscrossing that circle. Big circle? Make a big circle and crisscross, pinch where it crosses, and then tuck that tail into the circle. Now pull. Nice. Okay, we're gonna take our scissors and just trim that tail off because we don't want a big long tail. Well, there? Yep. That tail right there. Don't trim off the string, just the tail. <laughs> okay, and as you're making this, you're gonna wanna keep kind of pushing your string down. You don't want it at the top of your pins. So push it down a little bit. Now we're just gonna go through the perimeter of our shape first. So we're gonna go around a pin on the inside of the shape and then on the outside of the shape. So how do we do that? Inside, outside. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're just swirling around the pins like a zigzag, inside and outside. This is going to create a nice, strong perimeter. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go over this perimeter a few times to make sure we've got it right. And if you notice your string is starting to be all at the top of the pins, push it, just push it down a little bit. Every once in a while, just stop and push your string down. Okay, and then once you need more floss, you're just gonna pull it out gently just a little bit at a time. Remember, we don't need too much at a time. Okay. If you pull out too much at a time, it could get in knots, and then that's not fun. Knots are not fun to work with. So you're gonna turn the cork as you go. It's easier to work with that way. So some kids are gonna go from here to here. This is on the outside of the shape. So if you have a string like that, in art, we call this positive space and negative space. So we're gonna be filling in all the area. That's what we call it in math. Or positive space, that's what we call it in art. So we wanna make sure that all our string is staying on the inside and the area in the positive space. If I went like this and went to this corner, that would be in the negative space. That would be outside the perimeter. We wanna make sure it's all within the perimeter. As you're doing this, you wanna kind of keep your string tight, but not so tight that your pin starts scrunching together. Kate and I are going to keep working on the perimeter, so right now would be a good time to pause the video and catch up with us once you've done your perimeter three or four times. And then I'm gonna show you how to fill in the area. 
Kate and I have gone around our perimeter three or four times so there's a nice strong shape on the perimeter. Are we going to cut this off? No, do not cut it off. So I'm gonna show you now how to do the area. So that is the inside of our shape. So hopefully you're still pulling on your string nicely and it's in the paper. Kate's is a little bit tangled up. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to untangle it, okay? This floss, you have to be very <laughs> gentle with it because it can get in knots, but the knots are really easy to undo if you're patient. Okay, or can you be patient with I the nuts? I can always be patient. All right, we're just gonna slowly pull at it. So see that? Don't pull the whole thing. We just pulled a little bit, and then you're gonna pull a little bit more, and it's going to unravel as you're pulling it. Okay, so pull it very slowly. Or the area is anything inside of the perimeter. And this is a fun part, because you can go crisscross and crazy all you want, as long as it's inside of the perimeter. And remember again, not to pull too hard on the floss because you don't want all those pins to start squeezing in. And also remember, you don't wanna go crazy and start going outside the perimeter like that because then you'll lose your shape. All the crisscross that you do needs to be inside the shape, inside the perimeter, mm. inside that positive space. Mine are kind of getting up here, so I'm gonna kind of scoot them down just a little bit with my fingers. Hey, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like it. Okay, now every once in a while, Kate, you're gonna press it down just a little bit. Okay, look, Kate's string is getting jumbled like this, so what does she need to do? She just needs to pull on it just a little bit just very slowly and it will untangle as she's pulling it very gently. Okay, and see, now she's able to use that string some more. And you can keep going, filling in the area as much as you want. You can use all of your string or you could just do a little bit if you want. I think the more string you use, the better it looks. Okay, so sometimes your string can do this and get in a big tangle. I'm gonna show you, you kind of kind of loosen it up with your fingers because it gets too tight and then it doesn't know how to get untangled. So just kind of like pull pieces apart with your fingers and then you'll be able to pull it again. So Kate has a lot of her area done and her string is in a pretty good knot, okay? So she's like, well, should I just be done? But no, we are going to clip that string and tie it to one of her pins. Watch this. We're gonna tie it to one of her pins in a knot, just like we did at the beginning. Put the tail through and tie another knot. And we're gonna clip that tail off. We're gonna take the other end of the string, the one that's not in a knot, and we're gonna start using that side. So we're gonna knot it again. This isn't gonna happen to everybody, but it will happen to some of you. So we need to make sure we're ready in case it happens. This is looking pretty good. I know, yours is looking so good too. Okay, we've built ours up. So look at how many layers I have in there. I'm gonna show you guys how to tie this off to finish it. Okay, so you want to put your string around one of your pin heads. Keep a big open circle like this. Then you're going to take your tail. Now, if you have a bunch of string over here, just give a little trim so that you have a tail. Tuck the tail through that circle that you just made and give it a nice pull all the way to the pin. Good. Now we're going to do it again. We're gonna take a circle, make a circle, tuck that tail up into the circle. We're gonna pull it. You have to make that sure that circle goes all the way towards the pin. And that gives us what's called a double knot. Kate, this is so good. All you need to do is trim off your little tail right there, and then we're done. There. Oh, that's so good. Should we show everybody? Sure. Wow, that looks so good. Yes, I love yeah. your heart. Oh, thank you. And my star, are you going to give yours to anyone, or are you going to keep it? I'm going to give it to my mom. Oh, she's going to love For the Christmas. 
for Christmas. Okay. She's gonna love it. How nice of you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, everybody. If you have a grown up, take a picture or video of you making your string art. They can post it on social media. Make sure to tag us at the Winkle Crate. That way we can see what you made and how it turned out. Would you love to see how everybody's turned out, Kate? Mm -hmm. I would love that. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Put that string under. If something goes wrong, don't throw a fit. No, I don't remember. Per <laughs> Perimeter. <laughs> now, what is it called when we're just doing the outside of the shape? Uh, I, I don't remember. Per... Perim... <laughs> Perimeter. Uh-huh. Perimeter. That's right. Sometimes you mess up, but again, don't throw a fit. <laughs>